Okay, class, we're back. And we finished up on uh, some uh, temperatures for um, mixing valve for uh, shower valves and uh, or tub shower valves. Okay, if you have a shower head, you have to have a, uh, you have to use some sort of mixing valve. There's two types listed in the book. Okay, now I did mention briefly that uh, one example, one exception is uh, the Roman spout, that tub valve that comes out of the deck of a, of a drop-in tub and extends into the tub. They're usually big, long spouts, very expensive, big, expensive handles. Those are legal. Now, if they want to have like a handheld shower, what I've done, and I imagine you guys are still doing it, you would put something like a Simmons valve on the inside wall, and uh, it would be hooked up to a, a handheld shower. Now, that would be a mixing valve, of course. That would be the shower version, the, like an S96-1. And that way you can keep everything legal. And most likely the people could use that to like uh, rinse off uh, hair or whatever if they were taking a bath in that fancy tub. Okay, let's move on to another valve that wasn't really discussed up, to down, up till now. And um, one of them is called... All right, this would be an uh, example of the valve that turns the water on and off inside a toilet tank. All right, the old style ones, uh, which there are not probably very many left out there, they're actually easy to draw, easier to draw. They were like this, with this being the bottom of the tank, like that. And uh, the water would come up here. And uh, there'd be a shutoff down below. And the water would come up the pipe and down a little pipe called a hush tube. So this hush tube here, the water would go up, around, and down. The hush tube would keep the water quietly entering the tank at the bottom of the tank. If this breaks off, the water splashes all around. It might even splash out the cover and uh, makes noise. Okay, so the hush tube brings it down. Now, to shut this off, there used to be a ball on the end of it. Some of you might have seen it at those toilets that are left out there. And this ball rides up and down like this on the level of the water. So when it goes higher, it would shut off. And when it drops down here, when the water, when you flush it, uh, it would open this valve and fill up. Okay. Of course, uh, when this became defective, the ball would kind of sink and uh, it would let water spill into the toilet itself. Okay, so this is called a ball cock. Now, the new ones, work a little differently. It's same principle. But the float now surrounds this here. And the float rides up and down and does the same job as the float that used to be out, outside over here. And, uh, but it's the same, it works the same way. These are very, uh, very durable and uh, they last a long time. Very little metal, very, very little metal on these here. They're almost all plastic. I think it's just one very thin piece of metal and a, and a little metal clip. Okay, uh, so this here would be the ball cock. Allows water into the water closet. Okay, and over here, this here isn't really a valve. I guess, it, uh, I guess it is. They call it a flush valve, so it is a valve, but it doesn't. It lets actually lets the water out, and there's a pipe over here. It goes up like this. And it's called an overflow tube. The whole thing, this whole mechanism here, is called a flush valve.
which is also the name of the valve that lets the water into a urinal or a commercial toilet. All right, so this here uh, has a has a flapper that you're familiar with, with a chain. The flapper sits here. I'll color it in. And it rides up on a chain that is hooked to the arm for the uh, flushing lever. I don't want to draw it in because it's going to get a little confusing. But it lifts this up and lets the water lets the water down, and then this thing falls back into place. Okay, and this thing is hooked up to the um, to the overflow tube. All right, so uh, that's something also that's in the tank. This overflow tube right here, coming off here, beside uh, letting the water into the tank, and it does have a hush tube that runs down, I believe, alongside it. It has another tube that comes off here, and it goes right into this. This small, very small tube, it's about the size of an ice maker line. Uh, what it does is it goes down here, it goes right around the, the shutoff, or, you know, the stopper right here. It goes underneath it and lets water into the bowl of the toilet. Okay, so while the, the, uh, the main part of the water comes out here, there is some that goes down here, and it fills the, uh, fills the bowl. Okay. All right. So that is the uh, one type of flush valve. All right. Another uh, flush. Actually, I call it a flush valve. Flushometer is a better name for it. This is what they use on the uh, commercial toilet. Okay, we're all familiar with this. I call it a flush valve. It's a flushometer. Uh, flushometer is when you see a commercial toilet and it has that that valve. It's usually like a Sloan, and it's down low. It's chrome with a little arm on the side of it. Some of them now are like uh, they just sense that you're there and they'll actually flush automatically. But the uh, the old style ones uh, were manual. And you had to flush them manually. And what they would do is they would let water in, a set amount of water before they shut off. Okay. And so they were like automatic and they didn't need a tank. Uh, the only thing is they need a lot of water. Uh, never seen one in a private home. You would need at least a three quarter water supply, at least a three quarter, if not one inch. Usually it's in a commercial building and they spell out exactly what you're going to put in as far as the drain piping, venting, water piping, and, um, it's been a while since I've done one, but it's not half inch. So you probably don't have enough water in a private home to make one of these work. These require a lot of water all of a sudden because there is no tank. Okay, but that's a flushometer. Okay, uh, now one thing that uh, I'm going to mention, but we are not responsible for, technically it's not plumbing. is a meter and i think we talked about it and I, I think we even sketched it out i think it was this uh tier one in any case this could be half inch or three quarter whatever it is now the meter is right here and you read it up on the top. Now the plumbing system starts on the house side of the meter, like over here. This is the house side. This is the outside going to the street. Okay. So on the house side, that's where we pick it up. We'd have a shut off right here. Okay. And then probably come up and uh, maybe have a, 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 a faucet, you know, if you want. If somebody wants to uh, take some water off, they could, but you'd probably put another shut off up here too, but you don't have to. But you'd have to, uh, like a, a one by half inch uh, female T right here. So you could, something like this. You'd have your shut off here, whatever size the pipe was. We'll say one inch, one inch ball valve. And you come up like this, maybe three feet high. You don't have to. But it's very nice to put it in because then they can put a uh, 
a faucet here. Something like that. All right, not a very good faucet. Uh, okay, and then over here, you probably have one on this side also. Again, you check with the town, see what they want. And sometimes what they'll do is give you a spacer. A spacer would go, let's see, this would be a fitting right here. So the spacer is exactly as long as the meter with the two ends on it. And uh, they'll give you a piece of pipe that would match this. And you hook it up like it was the meter. And they'll come in and take this out and put the meter in. As long as you hooked up the shutoffs, uh, pressure reducer, if it's like a very high pressure town like Portsmouth, they used to insist on a pressure reducer right in, uh, in this stretch right here. So this is technically not plumbing. But we work, you know, we're working right next to it all the time. Um, sometimes you might have to shut it off here. But normally, I honestly have never taken a meter out. Stay clear of it, right? You're not authorized to mess around with this in any way. If you got a problem, um, the bottom blows off, which I saw once. Uh, the water was shut off too fast before the pressure reducer was installed. I didn't do it. Uh, but it did blow off. And... Uh, it was designed, I think it's a freeze, like a freeze plate on the bottom. So before it freezes and blows apart, the plate will blow off the bottom. And uh, you'd call the water department or whoever handled it for that particular city or town. Okay, but it would look something like this here. Like I said, they'll put it, give you the spacer, depending on the town, and then they take it out. If you do it to their satisfaction. Okay. Now, we talked about uh, full flow valves. I'm going to make, these, make this quick because we've already talked about it. This means that there's no restriction. You look inside the valve, you can look in one and out the other, and it's not like reduced down inside. This would be gate or ball. They're the most common. These, I actually remember far enough back when these went around, like maybe as a kid, you know, like 60 years ago maybe, these were uh, the valves. You'll never see a ball valve in an old house unless it's, some, it's been a remodel, uh, remodeled uh, renovation or something. He's going to find a gate valve. And I know I told you this. I think it was tier one. Be careful if you ever go to a house with a gate valve, and that's where you got to shut it off. Uh, if you muscle this closed down near the meter, those two shutoffs on either side of the meter, uh, what will happen is it will shut off. I guarantee you it will shut off. But when you go to open it up, it will keep turning and turning and turning and the water never comes on because the disc that the stem is attached to that you can't see broke right it corroded and uh you could push it down all right but when you lifted it up it just broke right off it might have already been like falling apart uh, my advice is when you and i think i told you this but if it was tier two uh, when you open up a gate valve or when you close a gate valve never close it hard close it lightly and even if it's not shutting the water off, put up with the water leaking on the floor, like crack the meter, coupling open, uh, open up a sink. Um, try to live with the water getting by the gate valve slowly. Because if you muscle it off, I can assure you, can't assure you, but there's an excellent chance if it's an old gate valve, it will snap. And you, then you're out of luck. Now, if it lets go and it's... Uh, there's only one shutoff there at the meter. You, you don't have one on both sides. Um, the only way to replace it would be to shut the water off in the house. And the only way to do that is to go outside and turn it off at the street, out on the sidewalk if you're in the city. And we're not even supposed to do that because they have a, a special, I think it's like a five-sided nut that we're not supposed to have the wrench for it, take it off to reach in there. Now, years ago, uh, the plumbers used to, 
all carry a thing called a street key. It looked like a big T. It was about three feet tall, about that wide, and it had two hooks on the end that you'd put in and you'd unscrew the cover that way. Well, those days are over. And um, you'd have to call a, a, the water department. Now, you call a water department, what, 8 o'clock at night because you were there on an emergency call. Uh, they ain't going to come. You're going to be lucky to get them the next day. So your customer is going to be very unhappy. So remember that. If you're working with a gate valve, um, like I said, just put up with the water leaking because uh, the alternative is to snap it off and then deal with it the hard way. Okay, but these are full flow valves. These would be suitable, and I think we talked about this, for the water service. All right? No globe valves. Now, what's a globe valve? A globe valve would be like a stop and waste. Uh, any of those other ones, any of those other valves where you look in the valve and you can't see through the other side because it goes in and does kind of one of these things. It's too restrictive. And... Uh, they do make a stop and waste like three quarter inch. And I've seen somebody try to slide one by when I was an inspector on um, Little Compton. It's like, no, nah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's not a, a legitimate valve. The best valves are your ball valves. They're really good. You get a good one, you know, like an Apollo, uh, one of those other, you know, name brands. Even the generic ones aren't bad. Uh, also, if you haven't worked with one of these, when you heat it up, if you want to put it on, um, uh, sweat it on uh put like a wet rag on the other side from where you're working keep the valve cool because it's got a i believe it's a teflon seat inside it's some kind of plastic plastic doesn't like heat heat it up enough that you got like a good joint you know wipe it and keep it and then get your torch off and immediately cool it off it doesn't hurt anything cool that thing off and go do the other side all right because it's possible i never did it but i, I know it's possible you can cook these and they're not cheap. The good one, especially, is not cheap. Okay. Um, and I did mention the globe valve, which would be a stop and waste. They call it a stop and waste. It's that little wheel handle, either red or blue handle, uh, that you'd put in back of your silcock. So the outside faucet, whether it was frost-free or not frost-free, most of them these days are frost-free. Not code yet, but, uh, in fact, I would only use a frost-free. But to back up that frost-free, you have to have a backup valve in the cellar, and that would be the stop and waste with a uh, the stop the shut off with that little button on the side that you unscrew, which we talked about before. Now you could go and get uh, for a few extra dollars, you could get a ball version of that ball valve version with that waste on the side. Really nice job, and uh, you just loosen it up. You don't have to take that little nut off. Just loosen it up, and the water will trickle out. You might get a couple half a cup of water. In the spring, just reverse it. Close that up, go outside, shut the valve off, and away you go. Now, this I think I showed you, but if I didn't, let me show you right now. Okay, the um, Okay, now I'm exaggerating a little bit. Yeah, I should have done this the faucet and rent. But anyway, if you have a shingle, the shingle has a little bit of a kick to it. I don't know how many degrees. We'll say five degrees. And what happens is the faucet is heading down, like sloping down. If I didn't show you this. So that if you don't put the shim, they give you a shim that will kick this up to counteract the angle of the shingle. It looks like a plastic wedge. Use it, because if you don't, what happens is the shaft runs right through here and the washer and the seat are back here, right? So when you turn it here, it shuts off here. So this would be a, if this is 12 inches, this would be a 12 inch frost-free silk cotton. They make eight, six, 10, and 12, I believe. 
All right, so this is the wall of the house right here, the outside wall. And this is actually into the cell, right? Just above the sill. The sill would be right where my hand is. This would actually be past the sill. So you'd be in the cell. Okay. Now, this happened to me. I think I might have told you this. Um, I didn't have a shim on here. This was back in the early 70s. I think I was, I was an apprentice for sure. And I didn't do this. And what happened was the water stayed in here because I didn't have a, a stop and waste over here. I just used this as the shutoff, which worked. And uh, over the winter, this here water, I'm going to make the water red. It froze and it blew out the pipe. So the pipe, when I turned the water on in the spring, now in the, in the winter it didn't matter because it was just frozen water, just not, the, not much in there. But as soon as I opened it up in the spring, the water came out here, you know, now it's rushed out of here and it's like spraying all around the cell. Unfortunately, it wasn't finished. So when you looked at this pipe, for those of you who haven't seen frozen pipes yet, the pipe, when it freezes, looks like this. It blows open like that. That's pretty close. Now, what you can do is either cut it out and replace it. Now, one problem, for those of you who have done some of these, you might have already experienced it. If it freezes like this, you think you're just going to cut out a little piece, three or four inches? Nope. Because what happens is the pipe actually expands all around here a little bit, not much. You can't see it by eye. And when you cut Excuse me, when you cut it out and you try to slip a coupling over it, like a slip coupling or a regular coupling, the pipe has actually increased a few, just a little bit, tiny little bit, enough so that it won't take a coupling. So you might have to go further back. So you might end up taking out a piece of foot long. Or, no, it was my own house, so I didn't have to answer to anybody. What you can do is get your pliers out and pinch this together. Now, pay attention, because sometimes you're going to be in a situation where you really do not want to cut this pipe out. And it's not going to be a nightmare if it starts leaking again someday. Okay, you pinch it back together, all right? Get your file out, file down any burrs, sand cloth, sand that thing down, and uh, and then get out your solder, all right? Hopefully you can get it, get at it. And uh, you just melt the solder on here and leave like a, you know, just enough so it's just about into the crack and leave it mounted a little bit over the top, okay? And then the proof is when you open the water up, uh, a, a good test would be to put a cap on here or put a hose where you can shut the hose off. You know what I mean? Open this up so it's under full pressure. So if it's under full pressure and you don't have a leak, you're in. All right, that's the end of it. Uh, it was a trick I learned as an apprentice, and I tried it at my own house. Now, that was around... 1973 or four, and I lived there until 2004, so almost about 30 years. Never had any more problems with it. But I also, um, I think I don't know if I put a shut off in here, or I, I put a, a uh, I you know straighten this out, push the pipe up. I don't recall what I did, but I had to correct it. So if you find this, if this happens to you, be sure that you fix it like that. But find out what caused it because uh, chances are it's going to happen again. Okay, uh, I think that's it for this segment. I will see you guys, uh, I'll see you back in class.